Hi, I'd like to show you how you can make a frame for the infinity mirror and have the frame pieces come together quite nicely, 90 degrees, not too many gaps in the wood. Now I'm going to start off by uh, using a piece of framing material which I got from a local supplier. It's a sort of L-shaped arrangement. I'm going to use this shorter edge for the front and this longer edge is going to run down the side so the frame up is actually quite deep. Now I'm going to use a drop saw and this drop saw is, is pretty old. It was cheap when I bought it and so its accuracy is not that good. Um, so you need to do a couple of things to try and improve that. One is um, getting hold of a blade which has got more teeth to this. Now this blade here has got uh, 80 teeth on it. I think the original blade that I've taken off had somewhere in the region of about 60 teeth or even less probably. Um, the second thing is the creation of this uh, sacrificial fence. Now I've already made some frames. Um, so this has already been set up previously, but it's just a piece of wood which is screwed to the fence on the left hand side here. The next thing is to actually set the blade up at 45 degrees quite accurately. Now you can see I've got one of these drafting set squares. This is great for setting the blade up because this, as I say, is quite an old machine. It was never very accurate when it was new. And if you move it to the 45 degree detent point, you can actually find that there's probably one or two degrees of waggle. So the thing to do here is to, to get one of these ones, and it's great to have this type because it's nice and slim, and actually fits between the blade teeth, because the blade teeth actually protrude slightly. So what the technique to do, and this is already set up, it does take a couple of minutes to do, but basically to bring the saw down, this is the saw is actually not plugged in by the way, and push that up against the blade checking against the fence and also against the blade to see if there's any gaps. Um, and once, once you set that up uh, pretty accurately, you'll find that your, your cuts are always going to be at that nice 45 degree angle. What we can do now is um, get the framing timber. I've got some framing timber here which has got a longer side and a shorter side. I'm going to use the short side for the front of the frame and the longer, deeper side for the side of the frame. It's already cut at 45 degrees at this end. And I've marked off four locations. Now the length of this is um, 325 millimeters from this corner here to here. And we're going to rough cut basically the, um, the four lengths. Eventually we'll have two cuts. Just indicating the uh, direction of the cut here. But really it's um, at this point here that I'm interested in to start off with. That's the uh, where we'll put it up against the fence. So let's uh, make those first four cuts. I'm oh, just going back on to the, the size and, and how I've set this up. I'm actually using a mirror which has been cut um, exactly to 300 by 300 millimeters squared. So this needs to slip obviously just inside the frame a small amount of slap and slot but, but not too much, maybe one or two millimetres. Now to get the right length for the pieces of wood, what we need to do is we need to understand what the thickness of the side of the frame is going to be. Now this is the side of the frame, as I said, this is going to be the front. And measuring the thickness there, I get around about seven mil just over. So I need to add twice the thickness of this material so that the inside of this frame will be suitable for the 300 by 300 millimeter glass. So that really totals up to 314 millimeters. Um, I've taken it to 325 millimeters just because the first cut I'm going to do is, is fairly rough. The second cut will be the more accurate one and I'll show you how we get the lengths of the timber all the same. So let's make these first cuts. So we now have um, four pieces of timber, uh, roughly the same length, 
Um, now one end is, is finished, so to speak, but as you can see the angles are both the same. So now we need to remove the material in the other direction. And the trick to getting a nice square frame, apart from having a nice 45 degree angle here, is actually to get the lengths of the timber all the same. And this way is where we employ the, uh, the extra piece of the sacrificial fence that we made. This position it's going to be clamped in position. And I'm going to measure the length of the piece that we want to make. Now, as I said before, I'm looking for 300 millimeters plus twice the thickness of the material to give enough room for my mirror, and that's 314 millimeters. Now, just for any inaccuracies and for a little bit of slop, I'm going to make that 315 and a half. So about one and a half mil extra on. Just checking again, so I'm coming from here, 315 to this corner edge here. And I'm going to tighten this up. In position so this doesn't move now. So recheck. And the cut that we're going to make now is this other cut. So that means actually turning the timber the other way up. So we want the two cuts to come in to each other. You can see where that extra is now coming into play. So pushing it up against the fence, we're going to remove this piece. Again, removing this bit. Bit. It's always worth double checking this because really uh, it's very easy to get these lengths wrong and very easy to cut the wrong angle. Anyway, here we go. So there you have it, we've got now four pieces of timber um, and they all should be exactly the same length. Okay, next stage, how do we get them back into a frame? Or how do we get them into a frame rather? Okay, we're ready to put the uh, frame together. Uh, I've just got it loosely assembled here with uh, one of these um, picture framing supports. So this is going to support the frame whilst uh, the glue is still wet. I'm going to be using just normal PVA wood glue. Um, about two hours before I can remove the clamps and about 12 hours there, yes, for full strength. So uh, we'll just go ahead and start applying a small amount of glue to each of the surfaces. I want to make sure that they're well covered. I mean the excess glue will come out and uh, squeeze out and we can remove that with a damp cloth. So we need to do this to all four pieces. I'm trying to work quickly just so the video is not too boring but um, here we go number two number three apply this here put that one back in And yeah, we're making a square frame here, so I'm not bothered which goes into which position. They should be all the same. So we can start putting this back together.
I'm working on a piece of hardboard here because as I put this last piece in we can make sure that everything's flat against the bottom and now I'm going to start tensioning up the webbing you can see it's it's just beginning to come tight so again just making sure it's pressed down now before it gets too tight I'm just going to check because these webbings don't always pull in square and that yeah there's a little bit of rock there you see that And now pull quite a lot of tension onto those joints. Looks better. And then finally just to remove some of the excess. Probably best to do that actually with a, with a damp cloth and a dry tissue, but there will be some tidying up to do on the outside of the frame, but the frame is going to be uh, painted anyway. Just gently turn that over and also make sure. Glue is okay, so we can leave that now for a couple of hours. Okay, a few hours later, this um, should have uh, glued together quite nicely. Just to re um, release the clamps. Now, these plastic clamps can be a little bit, just a little bit stuck. frame will need a little bit of cleaning up and uh, the frame is going to be uh, painted so I'm not too worried about the glue that will come off but you can see that the joints are um, pretty well 90 degrees and there's not too much of a gap in there probably won't need to uh, put any filler in or anything like that. Um, so there you have it, one frame. Thank you very much.